Fast Forward Productions, the women are speaking. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the One Broke Actress Podcast, an honest account of actor life plus a few lessons I learn in the process. I am your host, Sam Valentine, and we are on our second set of our April episodes. If you missed episode one, go back and listen to it. It's worthwhile, I think. You can fast forward through my answers at the end, but just listen to the top of the episode to give you a very brief overview, but you should go listen to the episode. I feel like we need a little reset. We need a little Q2, April, May, June reset where we restructure our goals. It's something I help actors with a lot, and I think that we can all do it together. And I know that a lot of you are hurting for cash in various ways. Now, tomorrow, always, all of us in different times in our career. So this is my way of kind of giving you what I would talk about in a one-on-one call. And I want you guys to check in with yourselves. You can answer these questions with other people. You can just, after I say it out loud, pause and talk to yourself in the car or call your friend or write it down, whatever you think. I just really think that we all need a little introspection every now and then. And sometimes the podcast is all about other people's viewpoints. And sometimes it's important to talk about your own. So I'm going to ask you questions every April episode, and then I'm going to answer them because I like attention and because it's good content. and because you guys enjoy the vulnerability. So in all seriousness, I do think it encourages you guys to be vulnerable as well. So I will give you my answers after I ask you the question. Let's get into it. To review, because it matters for this week's episode, last week's question was, using the following areas of life, write out what you did for yourself in each area in January, February, and March. No bullshit allowed. You're not allowed to beat yourself up. You're counting victories. I don't care how big or small. And the areas are financial, career, health, relationships, mindset. And if you want to rock with some spiritual, rock with the spiritual. Okay? Financial, career, health, relationships, mindset. This is all stolen from SMART goals, by the way. I didn't come up with this. I just read a lot of books and listen to a lot of internet things. So today's question is using your answers from week one. So yes, you do have to do the original assignment. From your answers from week one, what got the most of your time? Why was that? Was it forced upon you or did you choose to put it there? Second question, what got the most of your mental energy? What took up the most space in your head? Because often it is not the same as what took up space in your calendar. Once you think about those, I want you to consider how one of these affected the other. If you could go back to January, no further, and alter it, would you? Where do you want to direct your time now? And where do you want to direct your mental energy now? I realize I'm asking you guys a lot of detailed questions, by the way. And if you wish you had it in front of you on your phone, on your screen, something like that, I'm also sending these out from the email list and from my Instagram broadcast channel. So you can get them a thousand different ways. I just want to make sure you have easy access. So that's the question. It's really interesting to think about for several reasons, but especially as actors, our brains tend to wonder a little and figuring out what took your mental energy versus what took your time and who chose that is a very good question I think for us to spend a moment on because oftentimes it feels like our life is so outside of our own hands and to take it back feels wrong, not against, no, what's the word I'm looking for? A lot of times our lives feel like they are out of our own hands. And that is very true. And given your circumstances, especially if you have dependents of any type, a lot of your stuff is not in your own hands. If you have any sort of generational issues like poverty, racism, bigotry, (laughs) any sort of issue, there's a lot of shit you deal with that's outside of your own means. But... Some of it you can take back in your time sometimes, but a lot of it you can take back in your mental energy. So that's what we're going to address today. Now, if you're like, okay, great, I'm good. Thank you for the assignment. Bye. Great. Awesome. Continue on with life. If you want to hear my answer to this, I'm going to read it to you because I had to really think a lot about this. And to be honest with you, I don't even know how... I, I didn't. I wrote this very quickly and I didn't reflect on it too much. So I'm going to reflect out loud for you. Let's do it. I wish I had a really nuanced answer here, but I will be honest that clearly if you look at my list or listen to it or watch it from last week's question, it was clearly career. I have a lot of hats, so to speak, and I wear them well. And this means one broke actress, my acting career, taking care of my family, being a daughter to my parents who I went to go visit, being 
in fast forward and being a boss of people, which is wildly weird. And I still think I'm 16 most of the time. Being financially savvy. Who gave me money? Why do I have these things? Being a quote unquote leader of this actor space, like, no, 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 no. I'm just a I'm just a question asker. Like, what? These are all different hats I feel responsible for all of the time. And sometimes I forget to put back on my main hat, which is the acting hat. Okay, this is enough of the hat metaphor. I understand that acting wasn't going to pick up like we thought it would. I didn't think that like tidal wave of auditions that we joked about, well, it wasn't going to happen, right? Like, come on. <laughs> Listen, I'm not an acting coach. I don't intend to be one. But something I have always enjoyed helping actors with is figuring out their work-life balance because I don't actually believe balance exists, that's my two cents, and helping to craft their schedule and use their time wisely. I like doing this so much, in fact, that I built an entire course around it called What to Do When You're Not Working. This is the class that I wish I would have had when I was much younger in this career and or maybe a couple of years ago <laughs> when I was not working. This is the time between audition spurts between bookings, between jobs, where you're not really sure what to do next and you feel like, did I have mojo and lose it? Am I not on the right track? What am I doing with my time? I built this class specifically for myself when I was a younger actor. And for the month of April, because we are so focused on sharing content and really doing things around building out your own life and making your own life choices that work for you, I wanted to give you a discount on the class. The class is evergreen, meaning you can get it online and take it on your own time. And it is split up into four separate sections. Acceptance and appreciation, using your time wisely, homework and reflect, rinse and repeat. Each is created to be accessible at any point in your career and give you tangible homework as well as mindset lessons to make downtime not only tolerable, but actually enjoyable and useful. Like I said, it's evergreen, so you can do it on your own schedule. It's all available online, so you can binge the class all at once, or you can slowly absorb it over time, which is my preference personally. And it comes with the What to Do When You're Not Working workbook, which is a 36-page follow-along workbook with takeaways and tips to implement your own goal-setting, scheduling, and nail down exactly how you want to feel and what you want to do with your time. For the month of April, please, please, please do not buy this class without using this code. Use the code APRIL50 to save $50 off the class. There is two separate payments method. You can pay all at once or you can split into two, whatever you need for your finances. But APRIL50 will save you $50 off the course. Do not buy it without the discount code. Okay, let's get back to the podcast. <laughs> You know, I talked to some actors actually last night at an Ads Go Union meeting with SAG-AFTRA commercial performers that some of them are actually having a huge influx of auditions. So when I speak, just so you know, guys, I'm only talking in my opinion. A lot of people are having really different circumstances than me, but I know myself and I know where I'm at in this career and I knew that I wasn't going to pick up post-strike and start auditioning five times as much as I was pre-strike. I just understand how this works. And recovery is just such a long process and we're still in it just from COVID, let alone from the strikes. And also IOTC is renegotiating. So like that's happening. And then next year we renegotiate commercial contracts. Like this is an ever growing process. But the way I structured my time, it kind of looks as though I expected acting to be presented to me on a platter. Again, 2023 was a really clear cut year. Although it was funky and odd and wild, we knew we'd be all in the same boat more or less. And we had to saddle up knowing there's going to be little to no film or TV auditions. And we knew save money, dig into community, go to the picket lines. The guidelines were basically written for us in advance. So when I made my ideal plans for 2024 and my goals and my thoughts and my dreams, I assumed it would be less clear than the year we knew we weren't going to audition. And I was more right than I wish. And the best and worst part about that is that I am very good at filling my time. I took the space that I have held for acting and emotional work and auditions and all of these things 
and I spent it on my businesses. This is not the first time I've done this. I've talked about it many, many times, but they took up a lot of my schedule. If you look back, the amount of Zoom meetings I was in for the first like six or eight weeks of this year was egregious. But that's how I'm able to do what I do. And I accept that. And I understand that. Listen, some days I have not a single thing on my schedule. And yes, I will fill it in one way or another. But some days I have six Zoom meetings because that's just where I'm at right now. And I realize I'm not laying tar on the side of the road. I realize that what I'm doing is quote unquote simple and it's from home and it's not physically taxing in any way. But it does take a lot of energy regardless. However, at the same time, my mental energy was very much spent on acting but not in a positive way. The thoughts like, am I going to be ready when things do start to roll in again? What do I keep talking about all the time if I feel like I'm not necessarily in the game? Can I really get rusty? Can I get rusty if all I do is like deal with acting? And I'll be the first to tell you, I still do workshops. I still, if you look at my actor list from last week's question, I've still managed to keep myself very much busy. I listen to the actor podcasts. I read scripts. I read sides with all of my friends as soon as they ask for a reader. I read all of the trades on Sundays. I sit down with my iPad. By the way, you don't have to buy them. I use the Libby app. If you have a library card, you can download it. And I sit on my iPad and I read Variety and The Hollywood Reporter. Sometimes I skim. But, you know, I get the gist of what's going on. I am in the mix, if you will. I probably did more than like the average person because I actually built this system. Hi, you're watching it, listening to it, reading it right now, where I have no choice but to stay roughly informed on the business. And my mind still wants to punch a hole in the whole thing. My brain still wants to look for spaces that I should be filling with more acting. So as I approach goal setting for April, May, and June, I want to keep this in mind for my mindset portion of those five categories we talked about. What took up my physical time and mental time in an ideal world would be more similar. <laughs> believe that this is called being present, but this is new to me. So I'm not entirely sure. I am just starting to see from putting these words down and now saying them out loud to you that back to my previous question of, did you choose this or was it chosen for you? This was pretty unintentional. I let my self fall into these traps. I didn't choose to, I'm going to consider this today. I'm going to spend energy on these thoughts today. And I know that it's really hard to guide your thoughts in this job, but it makes me wonder just how much stronger my intentions could be if I actually put them out there. So if I intend to put energy towards something, can I also keep my thoughts in line with my actions? And it's easier said than done. And I realize it's a very broad concept to be bringing up on a podcast or YouTube or something, but I think it's really worth noting because all of our goals is to connect and to be present and to be in the scene, in the class, in the, in the self-tape, in the Zoom, whatever it is. And if we're having trouble being present in our day-to-day -day life, I mean, they correlate as much as I don't want them to. They absolutely do. So in asking this question of myself of where I put my energy I think that there is some more intentionality I can add here. I think it's just a really thought-provoking thing to wonder. And if all of your energy had to go to taking care of a child or a sick parent or bringing in money because you hemorrhaged so much last year, yes, good on you. You stepped up. You did the thing. I don't give a shit if it doesn't have to do with your acting career, right? I truly do not care because it all equals the longevity. But where were your thoughts in that? Were your thoughts supporting the actions you had to take? Or were your thoughts gently sabotaging you that, oh, you have to do this today. It's too bad because it would have been really great if you could have read a script. Is that helpful? And what do you want to take into the next three months of the year if you can choose? That is all I wanted to bring to you guys today. Think about it. I look forward to talking to you soon. If you're on the email list, you can respond to the email. If you are on Instagram, you can shoot me a DM. And I will talk to you guys with more of these questions next week.